Nuclear blasts are deadly for a number of reasons. You got the initial blast impact, the heat, radiation, and the fallout. Today, let's see ways you could possibly survive a nuclear attack and fallout. Please don't use this as a guide though, you know, I'm not a professional. Ready Government is an official website created by the American government to help its citizens prepare for a number of disasters, like tornadoes, earthquakes, hurricanes, you name it. On the site, they have a section for what to do during a nuclear explosion. So according to the American government, the first step you should do is get inside. A brick or concrete building is the best. This is to avoid being exposed to the blast or any radiation. If you were outside, after the fallout arrived, you have to remove contaminated clothing and wipe off or wash any skin that was exposed. Note that hand sanitizer does not work as a protectant against fallout. Same with disinfectant wipes. The next step is to get to the basement or middle of the building, but stay away from the outer walls and roof. Now, if you are now, if you are out somewhere and not at home, try and find the nearest shelter if it's not too far away. There are mass care shelters for people to go to. These shelters have water, food, medicine, etc. But it means you'd be living with tons of people in a very confined space for a long period of time. The website continues on saying don't leave until the government then announces what you should do next. So that's reassuring. I guess what happens next depends on the severity of the situation and how close or far you are from the explosion. But most government websites say the same thing. Go inside, stay inside, stay tuned. Now let's talk about nuclear fallout. The fallout is most dangerous in the first few hours after the detonation. That's when it gives off the highest levels of radiation. Fallout radiation decays relatively quickly with time. Most areas become fairly safe for travel and decontamination after three to five weeks. But that's three to five weeks of staying indoors and hoping you have enough food to last that long. It can affect the area though for one to five years. Now the fallout is basically radioactive dust and ash created when the nuclear weapon or bomb or whatever explodes. The amount and spread of the fallout is dependent on the size of the weapon and the altitude at which it was detonated at. So let's say the explosion happened close to where you are. Chances are the amount of radiation you would be exposed to would be lethal. Side effects from exposure to high levels of radiation includes hair loss, bleeding from the mouth, internal bleeding, ulcers, delirium, cancer, and you can even fall into a terminal coma death would follow in a couple of days. Let's take a look at the effects the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki had. After about a decade, survivors began suffering from thyroid, breast, lung, and other cancers at higher than normal rates. Along with this, pregnant women were at a high risk to miscarry or to give birth to a child born with birth defects or abnormalities. The children might also develop cancer later on in life. A total of 140,000 people in Hiroshima and 73,000 in Nagasaki died instantaneously or within five months due to the nuclear blast and its after effects. People within one kilometer of the bomb were carbonized by heat rays. Those 1.5 kilometers away suffered nasty skin burns. Their skin would then later fall off. Those inside buildings still were affected and burnt right to the bone, their flesh vaporized. Those that survived often suffered acute radiation sickness. Among the 100,000 or so survivors, the excess rates of cancer over the subsequent years were about 850 and leukemia less than 100. But again, this all depends on the size of the bomb. Apparently one megaton bomb, which is 80 times larger than the bomb detonated over Hiroshima, could affect people up to 13 miles or 20 kilometers away. Also, people would experience flash blindness. Even those 52 miles, which is 83 kilometers away, would experience this, and they would be temporarily blinded by the light. So back to surviving. Doesn't sound too pleasant if you end up surviving anyways, because the lasting effects can be devastating. The main thing is to stay indoors until it is safe to leave, so prepare now. Maybe we all should create a panic room or bunker. You may think that it's crazy, but it could be our best chance at staying alive and not getting sick afterwards. Underground bunkers are often prepped with food and water to last months. The food will be non-perishable things like canned food. 
Other things to have in there are blankets, candles, flashlights, and a first aid kit. The first aid kit is very, very important. If you get injured by the blast, it wouldn't be safe for you to just leave and go to a hospital. Plus, nurses and doctors wouldn't be working, they would be trying to survive. In Hiroshima, 90% of physicians and nurses were killed or injured, and 42 out of 45 hospitals were non-functional. People were left on their own fighting to survive. Another very important thing to have on deck is potassium iodine. Potassium iodine is said to block radioactive iodine from being absorbed by the thyroid gland, protecting yourself from radiation related injuries. Having those on hand would help you immensely. Here's the thing though, let's say you did have an underground bunker. Well, if the blast is really bad, you might die in a firestorm as a result of the thermal radiation. This would consume most of the oxygen, meaning people who have managed to survive the bomb in underground bunkers would then be killed as all the oxygen is sucked out of the atmosphere. So isn't that reassuring? The last thing that I want to talk about is the whole idea that you could survive a nuclear blast by hiding in your fridge. We can thank Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull for that one, since it shows Indiana Jones surviving a blast by doing so. But it's unrealistic. For starters, the fridge would have to be lead lined. And where have you seen a lead lined fridge before? Hiding inside a refrigerator might shield you from the immediate thermal pulse, but then the firestorm, again, would melt the fridge and suck out all the oxygen from the fridge. Plus, how long after the blast could you realistically stay in that fridge for? That's before you struggle for air, become cold, or need water or food. Because chances are, food was taken out of the fridge in order for you to fit inside. Needless to say, don't hop in a fridge thinking it will shield you, protect you, and save your life. Again, I'm not a professional at this, I've just done my research, but I think we can all agree that a nuclear war or a bomb or explosion would have lasting, devastating effects. All right guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below what video you wanna see from us next, we're always open to ideas. And while you're down there, smash that like button and obviously subscribe to our channel. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see you.